arrogance. And he replied. And he said, I was given a birthright. This is my birthright of superiority. I was born to be superior. Ana khairu minhu. I am superior to him. By birthright, I'm superior to him. I'm special. They're just like cockroaches. This is the arrogance with which history began. And be careful to check out to find whether that arrogance will repeat itself at the end of history. Is this why? Is this why Allah ordered the angels and ordered Iblis to bow down before Adam? So that you can see from the beginning of history how history will end. These are the people with whom history began. And then finally, وَمُلْكِنْ لَا يَبْلَى Eternal rule. Eternal rule. We are born to rule over you. That history will now repeat itself. The arrogance of Pharaoh. That arrogance will now manifest itself once again. وَمُلْكِنْ لَا يَبْلَى an eternal rule <laughs> will resurface again in the historical process with the Zionist movement. And so history is going to end the way Pharaoh ended. That the people who will live the way he lived will end the way he ended. And that end of history will come with the return of the son of Mary, the son of the Virgin Mary. And there are many things that are going to happen at that time. The most powerful voice in human history, the most powerful voice in human history, the most enduring voice in human history, to have prophesied the return of Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, is the voice of Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. History will end with a clash between those who are faithful to the truth and those who betray the truth. That Jerusalem is at the heart of the end of history. That the clash between those who are faithful to the truth and those who betray the truth, that clash is based on Jerusalem. It is Jerusalem which defines that clash. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels to bow down and make such a prostration before Adam alayhi salam. Why? Why would he do such a thing? What is the inner message being sent? Bow down before Adam. He refused. Iblis refused to bow down and prostrate. Was that the reason why Allah made the order? to check to see 
Was that the reason why? Aba was takbara. He refused. And he displayed arrogance. Arrogance. So there was arrogance at the beginning of history. Then Allah asked him, Iblis, when I ordered you, in addition to you, I ordered the angels, when I ordered you to make sijda, to prostrate before Adam, why did you not do so? And he replied, and he said, I was given a birthright. This is my birthright of superiority. I was born to be superior. Does that ring a bell? I was born, I was created to be superior. I am superior to him. By birthright, I'm superior to him. You created me. I'm special. They're just like cockroaches. This is the arrogance with which history began. And be careful to check out, to find whether that arrogance will repeat itself at the end of history. Is this why? Is this why Allah ordered the angels and ordered Iblis to bow down before Adam? So that you can see from the beginning of history how history will end? These are a people with whom history began. And then finally, وَمُلْكِنْ la yabla, Eternal rule. Eternal rule. We are born to rule over you. Then there was one who was arrogant. He was all powerful. He believed that the rivers belonged to him and the land belonged to him. And you should not be worshipping someone out there in the sky. You must worship me. Ana rabbukumul a'la I am the Lord most high I make the rules I am parliament <laughs> Allah says that when Pharaoh was drowning he realized that he was in God and then he made a declaration underneath the water that I now believe in the God of Moses, of the Israelite people. The Quran then informs us that Allah responded and said, Al-an, now Pharaoh, and before this you were in rejection, and you were, you were a troublemaker, you were corrupting, you were destroying everything. This day, we have ordained that your physical body is to be preserved by divine order. Your physical body is to be preserved. Why? Physical body. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً So that your physical body, when it is rediscovered, and it will be rediscovered, Allah will see about it, when it resurfaces in the historical process, at that moment, at that moment, لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً A countdown will begin for history to repeat itself for a people who will come after you. A countdown will begin and history will repeat itself. That's why the body is preserved. 
that the body of Pharaoh was discovered at the same time that the Zionist movement was established in Basel, in Switzerland. That history will now repeat itself, the arrogance of Pharaoh. That arrogance will now manifest itself once again. The claim to eternal life, which is there symbolized in the pyramid, this claim will now resurface in the stage of history, stage of the world. وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى An eternal rule <laughs> will resurface again in the historical process with the Zionist movement. And so history is going to end the way Pharaoh ended. That the people who will live the way he lived will end the way he ended. And that end of history will come with the return of the son of Mary, the son of the Virgin Mary. And there are many things that are going to happen at that time. The most powerful voice in human history the most powerful voice in human history, the most enduring voice in human history, to have prophesied the return of Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, is the voice of Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. Well, let's leave Surah al -Kahf and go to the other parts of the Qur'an, searching for the ayat on Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And we find in Surah Al-Anbiya only one more reference to Gag and Magag, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a town. Remember the town? And he had destroyed the town punish it by destroying it and then expel the people of the town وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا and then he banned the people of the town that they could never return to reclaim that town as their own أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ they are in, in, in a state of permanent exclusion, banned from returning to that town. Hatta, until, until when? Hatta, idha futihat, ya'juju wa ma'juju, until God and Magog are released. Wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun. And Gog and Magog, when they are released, they spread out in every direction, which is one meaning. And if you spread out in every direction, then you'll take control of the world. The land, the sea, the air. Read Toynbee. Read Arnold Toynbee. Read a book called Civilization on Trial. I'm giving you good books to read, incidentally. Not comic books. Read Arnold Toynbee, the British historian. Read a book entitled Civilization on Trial. You should get it on the internet. It was written somewhere around 80 years, 90 years ago. 1935, somewhere around 70, 80 years ago. And in that book, Arnold Toynbee points out that modern Western civilization has risen upon the world with a mission to take control of the whole world. And he says, the land, the sea, the air, everything. He said it in that book. They spread out in all directions and with the indestructible power that take control of the world. For the first time in history, one people will control the whole world. Nobody ever did that before. 
The other meaning is that they descend from every height. So they target you and they impose themselves upon you. You can't get away from them. Which town is it? Which town is it? That is linked with Gog and Magog, which is the biggest footprint of all. Which town? We used this methodology that we looked at all the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad pertaining to Gog and Magog to see whether there was any town mentioned by him that is linked to Gog and Magog. And when we had studied all the ahadith, we found only one town. Only one in the hadith. And it is Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, Al Quds. And so we said, well, here is a hypothesis which is already resting on fairly firm foundations. Since this is a town mentioned in the hadith that is connected with Gog and Magan. So let's look and try on the shoe and see whether it fits. It fits. Why can't we do that? So then we looked at Jerusalem. And we found that this is a town which was destroyed by Allah. And Banu Israel were expelled from the town. Even though Allah had given the land to them. The first time that they violated the covenant with Fasad, Wakadaina Ila Bani Israela fil Kitabila to Siduna fil Abdi Marlataini wa Ta'aluna Ulu and Kabira, the first time they committed Fasad, he expelled them and then banned them from returning. For a hundred years they were in Babylon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to it by sending an army from Babylon. An army that worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars and idols. So these ibad are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they destroy the state of Israel. And they destroy the masjid. And they take Banu Israel into slavery in Babylon. And so now they're, they're weeping by the rivers of Babylon. For the first time in the history of the Jewish uh, empire, destroyed the Haikal of Suleiman, the original Haikal. The actual temple that Suleiman had built. And this was considered to be one of the wonders of the world. Why? Because the jinn built it, obviously. It was a structure the likes of which man had never seen. It was massive and beautiful. It was a, a, a feat of architecture. It was considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So the, the Haikal of Sulaiman was a amazing structure that stood solid for four or five hundred years, untouched. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will that the first of the destructions occur. <laughs>
And then he allowed them to return. And then the second period of facade. And then he punished them again and he expelled them. This as well was about to be destroyed in a few decades. And this led to a second diaspora, a second time that the Yehud uh, fled in many different areas. And having expelled them this time, he left the door open for them. Despite all your wickedness, it is still possible. Asa Rabbukum Ayyarhamakum. It is still possible for you to be forgiven and have mercy. There's only one door. This is the door. A man named Muhammad If you shut that door, then tilka ummatun. You finish. Divine punishment will now begin. And if you are taken for a ride, and brought back to the Holy Land by Gog and Magog. And you return with your facade, then guess what I'll do with you? For in Uttum Hudna, if you return with your facade, your wickedness, your oppression, I will return with my punishment. The first time was an army that punished them. The second time was an army that punished them. The third time it will be an army. <laughs> If you return with your facade, we will return with our punishment. They return with their facade. It's happening now before your eyes. And so Allah returns with his punishment. It is at this time that the Prophet said, والسلام, the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that's clear. Look at what they're doing today. These are his words. At that time, even the stones will speak. Ya Muslim. Ah. Ya Muslim. Not all. Those who are waging war. 
those who engage in a mountain of wickedness and oppression and godlessness unprecedented in history. And so go back home today with joy in your hearts, even while there are tears in your eyes for the immense suffering through which we are going. Go back home with joy in your heart that there is a tomorrow which is coming. And so, we recognize the town to be Jerusalem. And we ask the question, who are those who liberated Jerusalem and brought Banu Israel back to Jerusalem? If you can recognize who they are, you have recognized God and Magog. There are other footprints by which you can recognize them. 